Section 11.1 is on page 734, talks about the sequences. Chapter 11 is a long chapter. We're going to have two exams over it. 11, 1 through 11, 11. So 11, 1 through 11, 7 deals with one aspect, and 11, 8 through 11, 11 deals with a different aspect. 11, 1 through 11, 8. 11, 11 1 through 11, 7 actually deal with series, except for 11, 1. 11, 1 would be the only sequence that deals with, the only section that deals with a sequence. The rules we're going to learn for this section only apply to this section, nothing else. So on your next test, it's going to be 11, 1. The next, next test is going to be 11, 1 through section 11.7. And on that exam, 11 1 is a standalone section. 11 2 through 11 6, you're doing the same thing. 11 7 reviews 11 2 through 11 6, sort of like 7 5 reviewed 7 1 through 7 5, it's 4 if you remember. So, we start off with a sequence. What's a sequence? A sequence is simply a list of numbers. Some of those are finite, some of them are infinite. We are more interested in the infinite. And a sequence looks like this. The list looks just like that. This book, this book writes this a few different ways. Sometimes they write a sub n. If they write a sub n with nothing else, they're indicating that you are starting at one, and you are running all the way to infinity. And sometimes they say this is a sub n, and they tell you what the starting point is and what the ending especially if it doesn't start at 1. Now, the important part for you to know is that if I look at this list, a sub 1 is really the first term on the list. a sub 2 is the second term on the list. The order of those is extremely important. And if I could find a sub n, that is the nth term on the list, that's a star. Reason for that, if you could find it, a sub n it generates the entire sequence. So we're going to start off with a quick refresher. That is, they start off with some problems giving you the sequence, tell me the terms, and in the long run, we're going to really use those in series. Now, something to, something that could save us a lot of work on the long run. If those are integers, always integers, you don't talk about a sub negative 1. And if you're starting the sequence, you must start at 1. You have no, no say in it. But the author could start at 0 if they wish, or at 3, or at 5. If we're talking about integers, if we say the subscript is n, the next integer up would be 1 more, and the prior integer will be 1 less. If you can start thinking about a sub n is a term, a sub n plus 1 is the next term, and a sub n minus 1 is the previous term, you could save yourself a lot of pain on the long run in this section. Now let's do some problems. We start off with number 4, and this is on page 744. I forgot to write that down. List the first five terms. Well, a sub 1 simply means wherever you see an n, you plug in a 1. And that's going to be a 0 over 2, which is 0. And for the next number, a sub 2 is going to be, well, 2 squared minus 1 over 2 squared plus 1. That is 3 fifths. So here. a sub 3 would be. 3 squared minus 1 over 3 squared plus 1, that would be 9, 8 over 10. A sub 4 would be 
4 squared minus 1 over 4 squared plus 1, that would be 15 over 16 and 16, 17. And the last term, if I'm glancing at this and trying to figure out a pattern, not that you have to get it for now, we just need to list it. What would be the fifth term? Well, I really don't need to list any more. I could just plug in 5 right there, right? And if I put a 5 right there, that would be 25 minus 124, and 25 plus 1 is 26. You could reduce, I suggest not to, because if you want to figure out a pattern, you really don't want to reduce any of those. And the next problem up is number 6. If I glance at that, well, a sub 1, if I throw a 1 in there, cosine of pi, and I'm going to list that for you, but you really don't need to list those, that's a 0. And a sub 2, if I throw a 2 in there, that would be the cosine of pi, that's a negative 1. If I put a 3 in there, 3 pi over 2 is a 0. 4 in there, 4 pi over 2 is 2 pi, which is 1, and a 0. So this is a sequence that consists of 0, negative 1, 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1. You know, sometimes a lot of those repeat, sometimes they don't. It's, there's no set way of really looking at this. The next problem up, number 12, this is what's known as recursive formulas. Recursive formulas depend on prior terms. So, meaning... If I wanted to find the 100th term in number four, 4 or 6, well, that's easy. Replace n by 100, and that's that. If I want to go for 4, that's 100 squared minus 1 over 100 squared plus 1, whatever that is. But if I look at number 12 and I try to figure out the 100th term, that's not as simple. That is, this says to find any term, take the term before that, and subtract it from the previous term. Which means if I want to find the 100th term, I need to take the 99th term and subtract it from the 98th term. What that means, I need those two terms. If I have an explicit formula, I want a term, I plug it in and I'm done. If I have recursive, I need to know the prior terms. So 2 for the first term, 1 for the second term. Don't mix things up. This term comes first, then a sub 2, in that order. Do not assume that, oh, the first has to be smaller. That's not the case. So if I want to find a sub 3, according to the formula, take the term before that, which is a sub 2, subtract it from the term before that, which is a sub 1. So this is 2, this is 2 minus 1, which is, one nope backwards dang it a sub two a sub two is a one minus a sub one which is a two that's a negative one a sub three take the second term subtracted from the previous term well the second term is a one minus the third term which is a negative one and do you see as i'm doing this i need to use the previous term every time that's not a nice three If I look for a sub 4, that is a sub 3 minus a sub 2. a sub 3, I know, is a negative 1 minus a sub 2. Okay, let me try this again. I'm sorry. Here. This is the problem. This is, and let me slow down. This is a sub... I'm doing it again, that's a problem. Okay, a sub 3, we did, you guys, it's right there. a sub 4, there, much better, is a sub 3 minus a sub 2. a sub 3 is what I just found. a sub 2 is listed, and this is the part that I said. I always need the previous term to figure out a term. This is a negative 2. If I want a sub 5, let's see if I can get it right, the fourth term minus the third term, well, the fourth term is right there. 
and the third term is a negative 1 that makes it a negative 1. So this list has 2, 1, negative 1, negative 2, and negative 1. So kind of odd. It doesn't follow a certain pattern. That could happen. Two sequences that come up a lot that we need to know on the long one is an arithmetic sequence and a geometric sequence. Here, you add a number every time. So if I add a same number, we call that an arithmetic sequence, and the general term, a sub n, the term that generates the entire sequence, is the first term plus n minus 1 times this common difference. The first term is always right there. The common difference you need to figure out. So to find d, you could take any term you like and subtract it from the previous term. And that's pretty much all there is about arithmetic sequence. The goal is for you to find the general term, of course. That's the key. In a geometric sequence, well, that's slightly different. It looks the same. It's still a list of numbers. But it has a bonus property. To find a term, you multiply by a number. And the general term is the very first term times this number that you multiply with raised to the n plus 1. Minus 1. Simple. And to find this number, you take any term and you divide it by the previous term. And that's where the word R comes from. R for ratio and D for difference. Difference, take any term, subtract the previous term. That's how you undo addition. And ratio, take to undo multiplication, take any term divided by the previous term. And that's where R comes from. But here we have a star property. If I'm looking at the sum from n equal 1 to infinity of a sub n, and you are dealing with a geometric series, this turns out to be the very first term divided by 1 minus the common ratio, provided r is between 1 and negative 1. That's something that we're going to start using really quick in this chapter, as soon as section 11 point, 10 point, 11.2. And I would like to look, look at two examples. Uh, number 14. I notice that, do you see that you're multiplying by, so take any number divided by the previous term and see if that works. If I multiply this by negative one fourth, do I get that? How about if I multiply this by negative one fourth? How about here? This is a bit geometric. So if I could identify what kind of an equation is it, uh, of a sequence is it? Oh boy. I'll get it right, don't worry. Oh, man. Okay, third time will be a charm. Well, the general term is the very first term times r raised to the n minus 1. There it is. That'll generate the entire sequence for you. No need to simplify that. I could. And if I look at this problem, do you see that you're adding a 3 every time? Again, take any term, subtract from previous. If you are, this is arithmetic. which means the general term is the very first term plus n minus 1 times the common difference, which is a 3. And if I distribute that m, that is 3n minus 3 plus 5 is a 2. And you could check really easy. Let n equal 1, 3 plus 2 is 5, and you could do the rest. Same thing with this. You could let n equal 1 and see you get a 4, and then proceed and look at the rest. Now, I would really like to include this in the next video, but since we are limited to 15-minute increments, I really need to take as much, or sp uh, use as much as I can out of those. So if I glance at a problem, uh, if I look at this definition, it says, a sequence has a limit, if we could write the limit as n approaches infinity. Right? You could write it like this, that's the same thing, but this is what it is. If I take the limit as n approaches to infinity of the general term and I get it to be L, what's L? 
an integer if we can make the term a sub n as close to l not infinity not negative infinity an integer by taking n to be sufficiently large what does that mean l'hopital l'hopital applies if i get zero over zero or infinity over infinity i could use l'hopital if this limit exists a limit exists if it's a finite number we say this sequence a sub n converge otherwise we say this sequence diverge or is divergent 